Welcome from the home of the Mets, City Field in Queens, New York, Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Minnesota Twins going up against the New York Mets. With my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. And say you the big bat in the lineup so far this year, Brandon Nimmo leads the team at OPS, so he's the guy that looks to slug and basically make things happen for them offensively. Just a machine in terms of production at the plate. He'll take his walks, he'll barrel up the baseball, he'll hit the ball in the gap, so he'll hit the ball over the fence. So talk about a guy going good. That's him right now, and he's a bat that you want to stay away from if you're the pitcher. He's had his ups and downs in his career as his ERA is just over four, but this is a guy that's not afraid. He's going to take the ball, he's going to go out there and give it his best. Puts it away for the out. One away. And now we take a peek at the Twins lineup. Someone who makes things happen for them, in part with his legs, Byron Buxton. And Boog, he's a big-time run producer for these guys, man. Leading the team in homers, runs batted in, doing damage on the regular, man. Making opposing pitchers just sweat out there. It's kind of fun to watch. Get ready for a show when he steps into the box. Carlos no. Correa in the box with one away as he takes ball one. The shortstop takes a ball. Next pitch is outside. One out, base is empty. And that drops in for a strike. And the pitch. And it's filled up. Helpful. Fights it off, he'll see another. Three, two. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the AB going. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. He flexes his power with that swing, and that gives him a lead. It's one nothing. He kept swinging, and it paid off. Well, that was a battle, Boog, and he just kept taking his cuts. Finally squared one off. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Base is empty. And now for the Twins, Royce Lewis. And that's a little high. This hitter loves attacking the first pitch, so not giving him something to hit is a good move. One run across in the frame so far here in game one of this three-game set. Next hey. offering is in for a strike. Right through there for a strike. One down, base is empty. That's a little bit low. Well, as a pitcher, when you make a big pitch down around the knees and don't get the call, it'll lead at you out there. So some handle it a little bit better than others. And right here, clearly letting the ump hear it a little bit. Kicks and deals. There is the high heat past him. That's a strikeout. Well, he didn't get the call on the mound the pitch before. Felt like he should have had him looking, I think. But, you know, that's good composure right there. He found a way to come back with another good pitch to get him to swing and miss. Here's Byron Buxton. Swings through that one for strike one. Two out spaces empty. 
Next offering is in for a strike. Goes down swinging for the strikeout. And that's strikeout number 100 on the year. Twins get one on this homer. It's now a 1-0 ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Queens, and today's starter, Pablo Lopez. What do you have on him? Well, he's allowing just over one base runner per inning, which is really good, especially for a starter, because these hitters get to see you two, three, maybe even four times in a start. So just shows you how deceptive and how effective his stuff is. We'll minutes. see if it's that way in this Not one. Sure. Here's Francisco Lindor. The wind of the pitch. And that one missing low. Lopez, an all-star a season ago. He features a four-seam fastball, a change-up, a slur, a curve, and he works in a sinker. And another ball. Doing out. A wind and a pitch. And a foul ball. That one a little bit high. Three balls and a strike. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. Jeff McNeil stands in. The second Lindor the move. And a foul ball. Lindor aboard here at first with nobody out. And Pablo Lopez will deliver. Ball one. And that just misses. One ball. It's a good take. Two straight. Swing and this one's bounced to the ground. Now the throw to first on the run. Not in time to get him, and the tapper turns into an infield single. Well, know what time you're a little leaguer, you're taught to hustle out of the box and give a full sprint through the base, regardless of how you hit it. And he didn't make great contact, but the effort was there, and he earns the base hit. Here's Brandon Nimmo, the top hitter in the National League, entering the day. And there's ball. No outs, runners at first and second. Next pitch inside, and it's 2-0. Oh. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. And he deals. Edge of the zone for a strike, and it's 2-1. Left-hand hitter waits. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Lindor zipping around third. Throw is a free line, and he scores. We're tied at one. His confidence level is so high. A really nice job of coming through in a big spot. I know that was a ground ball, but it was absolutely hammered through the infield. That's not one you're excited to get in front of if you're an infielder. You know they used to say, charge it. Crazy. Here's Pete Alonso hitting a ton of homers this year. Second most in the National League. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. It's great to get on the board in the first frame of the ball game, but here's an opportunity for them to really open things up with a couple of runners on. Let's see if they can cash in. And here it comes. That one, one missed. 
One and one. First and second here, no outs. One and two here. Breaks and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, it can be so tough as a hitter to pull yourself out of an extended slump. One that lasts for several games, even a week or more. No, right now, he's really in one, so I'm sure his mind is all over the place, racing, having a hard time sleeping, trying to figure out what can get him back on track, back to feeling more comfortable and settled in in the box. And now it's going to be Francisco Alvarez. Very high with that one. One and one. Tied up here in the early going. Not close with that one. Two and one. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss. Get into that dugout and hit the reset button. Line drive. Lays out and makes the play. He takes a huge gamble right there. If that, that ball gets it. by him, the run scores easily from second, and the hitter maybe ends up on third. But a great job, excellent focus on the dive, and he robbed extra bases on that one. So first and second with two outs. Ronnie Mauricio up now for the Mets. There's a strike. All ones the count. Two on, two outs. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Yeah, the righty deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two outs. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. Going two now. And oh, ball cool. one. Two outs. Couple of base runners at first and second. Hanks and misses. It's a strikeout. So one run in the inning on this base hit. All even at one apiece. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. New inning getting started, and here's the first baseman, the first baseman. Kyle Farmer. Kyle. Farmer. You can do it, man. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. There's a strike. Farmer measures six feet even, 205 pounds, and he's been on a good run at the plate, Whoa. hitting over 300 in one his last one. 10 games. Good slider down and in can be so hard to get on plane with. You're better off taking that pitch. And a 1-1. One -one. In the air to left center. Full extension makes the catch. And wow, what a great diving catch, Ziggy. Stackdale says that was a near perfect route, and it had to be. But that's just a big part of his game. I mean, this guy's instincts just seem to always put him in a position to make special plays. And right there, he's done it again. Max no, Kepler that's... in the box here lets that one go for a ball. One down, base is empty. A little bit low. Gary Simmons has the plate duty in this one. Well, with Simmons, it's not always your standard strike zone, Boog. It kind of gives a little extra in some parts of the zone and then can be tighter in others. But I think the important thing is he doesn't get labeled as inconsistent. So you got to stay ready up there.
and a pitch. And That's another ball. Three. Yeah, one of those umpires, you just have to know what to expect, right? Exactly. The line of the pitch. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Wide to kick the pitch. And yeah, there's ball That's four. Ball four. And now it's the, the switch hitter, 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 Carlos Santana. Santana. That one close, rule the ball. One and oh. the inside corner man at first one away here's a rocket out to left Nimmo snags it the Ryan Jeffers at the plate First pitch doesn't find the zone. At the belt and fires. Hey! Up the middle, McNeil. The underhand flip. They take the force out. Third out, and that ends the frame. Twins wind up stranding one. Score remains deadlocked at yeah, one. I do it all. If we ain't talking money, we ain't talking. It's the game. Yeah, Back here at City Field, we head to the bottom of the second. Now it's DJ Stewart. And that's outside. Kicks and fires. Fought off foul. Righty delivers. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Jeffers drifts towards it, hauls it in, and there's one away. Yeah, I'm looking at his body language, and he just doesn't seem like things are in sync, and the ball's just not coming off his bat the way it did earlier in the regular season. So up next for New York, Brett Beatty. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. That one ripped way back there. It's out of here. That's worth the price of admission. It's his eighth home run of the year, and just like that, they're out front. It's two one. One pitch, one swing, one home run. Yeah, you can say that's efficiency right there. Didn't need much time in the box to make an impact. on the first pitch of an at-bat. You watch him from the on-deck circle, so when you step in the box, you're ready to pull the trigger wherever it's at. Really good job by the hitter. Total conviction on that swing. 
Tyrone Taylor in now. Takes ball one off the plate. Slice down the right side. Right into the plate. And there's a strike. One out, base is empty, and a run in. Bottom half of inning number two. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. And he makes the catch. Two away down. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming in, but so hard to get on top of as a hitter. And now it's Frankie Lindor. The walk and a run scored his first time. Right down the chute. And that's strike one. Looks like he's just sizing him up there. Really good pitch to hit, but he took it all the way. Sometimes guys just want to set their timing later on in the game. That may be a pitch that he turns on. Oh, and two now. And down on strikes. That's the third out. Inning over. The Mets do pick up a run on this solo blast. And it's now a 2-1 ball game. You're dialed into the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. Now the left fielder, Trevor Larnick. Trevor Larnick. And a pitch. There's a strike. That one finds the zone. No balls, two strikes. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Way outside, and the count is one and two. And now the lefty. And there's a ball. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Two two. That okay. one just misses. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Next offering popped in the air, right field. Stewart makes the catch, and there's one gone. This is Willie Castro. He's over one. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And that's a double. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep, took the barrel right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. One out, runner at second. And here comes Carlos Correa. He's already homered here in this one. Throw to second, save. Shortstop takes a ball. Ball one, no strike. Next offering upstairs. Just missed. Down. There's a strike at the knees. Oh. 
Now a screamer into the outfield. And it's two away. Man, that's one of those at bats where you have to remind yourself it's now about the process. The he did everything right, right there. Nothing to show for it. But in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at bat. Here's Royce Lewis. He struck out swinging in his first at bat. Line to right, and that'll be a base hit. And they hold him at third. 90 feet away with two out. Waste no time there. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity. Right on top of it. Two gone with runners at the corners. Byron Buxton, the next twin up to hit. His first at bat was a strikeout. That one finds the zone, and it's 0-1. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. Little chopper rolls foul. He's gone off speed. He needs to elevate here with two strikes out of the zone. Two on, two outs. And that's outside. Now one and two. Castro, the runner at third. Lewis on at first with two down. And a one-two again. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. This one in the air. Squeezes it, and that's the third out. Twin strand a pair, and they trail it here, two to one. And we're back Leading as up. we go Leading to the last of the third, third. And stepping in for New York, Jeff McNeil. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. Ball. And the first pitch misses for ball Count one. one. Oh. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more nope. base hits. Okay. Just off the outside edge. Yeah, that's ball two. When you look at the elite teams in the game right now, there is going to be the slug, no question about it. But the really good offensive teams combine slug with more contact, with less swing and miss. That's in there, and the count is three and one. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either getting them to a place of fatigue or getting into the bullpen perhaps before you get to those higher leverage arms at the back end. Popped in the air, left field, makes the catch for the out. One up, one down. Here's the left fielder, Brandon Nimmo. Single that drove in a run his first time through. Inside corner for a strike.
Ball one, one there. Hey, he doubled up on the off speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. Hard hit, right side. Out on the oh. off balance throw. Now bad at first base. Alonso. Two outs, base is empty. Pete Alonso up now for the Mets. He was a strikeout victim his first time. That one finds the zone. Strike oh one. Top of the zone for a called strike. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches now in an 0-2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. Three. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Mets go down quickly, but they still lead it 2-1. to one. Back here in Queens, Kyle Farmer up to the plate now. Love it here at City Field. You know, it replaced old Shea Stadium back in 2009, and Chipper Jones was really sad to see it go. It's actually the third home of the Mets since they started out at the Polo Grounds for two seasons before Shea was finished. Well, these twins showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. And foul ball. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. The lefty fires. And ball another two. ball. We Wouldn't chase ball that ball. time. Line drive. Base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already is bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Kepler, the next to hit, takes low for a ball. The Mets leading by a run, top half of inning number four. That missed inside, and the count is 2-0. Left-hand batter waits. Headed towards the corner. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's one down. Now Next is the DH. A switch hitter, Carlos Santana. 0 for 1 so far. And there's a foul ball. The Mets up by a run here in game one of this three game set. And that's outside. And now it's even one and one. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Adrian Hauser getting loose out there. The one one. That one fouled off. Just That's missed ball. the inside corner, and the count is even two and two. Farmer leads off first with one away. High 
high fly ball out into left center field. And it's caught for the out. Now back on the catcher, Ryan Jeffrey. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. That's it for Sean Manaya. Just never found his groove, wasn't able to settle in. New arm coming on, back in a moment. Adrian Hauser gets the ball now. Well, at this point in the ball game, we're talking about middle innings and the middle length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Here's the catcher to hit, Brian Jeffers. Up and nope, in, ball. ball one. And a pitch. Foul ball there. Here comes a pitch. Foul off down the right side. Not even close there. And it's two and two. Bounce that off to the left, and we'll do it again. That's down and in. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Trevor Larnick in the on-deck circle for the Twins. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Two outs. Right side. Nabs it, and that is that. One left for Minnesota. They're down two to one. Back here at City Field, ready to go. Bottom four. Here's the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. Lopez back to work. Gets the outside corner with that one. Well, these Mets did a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way. And I'm seeing very patient at bats out of them. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. Kicks and deals. Next oh. offering misses down and away. Still relatively early, but with a pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set him up to do more damage later in this game. Fouls it off, still one and two. The pitch. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One out in the bottom of the fourth. The Ronnie Mauricio now. Struck out swinging his first time. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Chris, we were excited to watch him pitch. This is a little more along the lines of what we're expecting performance-wise. Yeah, but great pitchers like this, you may get one opportunity in one inning to get to them, to get some runs up on the board. And if you don't take it then, you may see zeros the rest of the ball game. That oh, one inside, it's and it's one and two.
And ball there's two. a ball. Base is empty one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. The other way. And it stays fair. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. The throw in. And he's out. Got to love the hustle and the attitude there to try to stretch that single into a double. But unfortunately, thrown out at second base. He was so close to being in scoring position. Two outs. Base is empty. DJ Stewart up now for the Mets. That's in there. Going one. Two down, nobody on. Tried to got? check his swing there. Appealed a third. Did not go. And another ball. Struck him out. And the Mets go down 1 2 3 as they're unable to add to their 2 1 lead. Ready now for the fifth inning, and now for the Twins, Trevor Larnick. And the pitch. And that one fouled off. Hauser in his sixth season, he features a sinker, a four seamer, a slider, a curve, and he works in a changeup. Next pitch is outside. Popped up to the left, into foul ground. Alvarez calls it in, and there's one away. And here's the Twins leadoff guy, Willie Castro, one for two. Hey. And there's the strike. Man, I mean, nice job just presenting it to be better than it actually was. That one is hammered right field. Stewart going back. And that one is off the wall. And now the tying run is in the scoring position. Two hits for him in this one, both for extra bases. Got to feel good about that. He hit that ball really well to deep right field right there. Got a pitch to drive and just stayed through it nicely. Didn't quite have the trajectory to clear the fence, but you're always happy with an extra base hit. Now a pretty big at bat coming up with a chance to even this ball game up. Now Correa up to hit. First pitch misses. And it's second. The ball shortstop right takes a ball. Right handed reliever. And a foul ball. Makes the count two and one. swing and a deep drive left field that's carrying well tattooed to tater town and gone another homer his second home run of the game and that's how they take the lead it's 3-2 
Lightning fast hands to be able to hit that velocity fastball on the inside part of the plate. In my experience, when you're looking out over the plate, allowing the ball to travel, it's pure reaction to hit a pitch in that location. That's a tremendous swing. One down. And next for Minnesota, Royce Lewis. Just missed. One down, base is empty. Right through there for a strike. Next pitch is downstairs. When the skipper calls down to the bullpen, he's expecting the guy to come in and get outs. So far, not getting what he was hoping for. Wouldn't oh, chase that great. time. Three two, and he walked him. Boo, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Buxton, yep, the next to out. hit takes outside. Next offering upstairs. He's clearly trying to work him away here. Both pitches off the plate. If you really want to put the ball in play, you're going to have to stay back and drive it to the opposite field. The pitch. Still only one out here in the inning. Baseman Kyle Farmer. Pulls that one foul. Lewis leads off first with two down to the inning. And ball one. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. And the righty deals. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Timing on the swing was good, able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. Max Kepler at the plate. And a good eye there. No one, no strike. Two runs across in the inning, and we're at the top of the fifth. A swing and a miss, and that strike one. Wow, play. good luck catching up to that one. And another ball.
outside corner. There's a strike. Bounce to the right side. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. Gets it there in time, though, and they do get the out. But the Twins bring in two on the homer. It's now a 3-2 ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. We head to the bottom of the field. Here's the third baseman, Brett Bainey. The pitch. And fouled off. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Here's your one. This to third. Lewis throws He's to out. first. And that's the first out at the bottom of the fifth. Now back at center fielder, Tyrone. And stepping in is the speedy Tyrone Taylor. Just off the inside edge. Home team down a run. Last half of inning number five. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Taylor races for second. And the tying runs at second base with a double. Well, his hot hitting continues. He's been getting great results lately. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it. And that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. A strikeout and a walk. That ball one misses. One. And that's ball one. One out and a runner at second. Next offering upstairs. And you got to wonder with first base open, one out. Is he going to get a pitch to hit? Good hitters count the 2 0. Fall off foul. Right hander kicks deals. Way out front for strike two. Fly ball down the line. And it falls. Here's the throw. It's off the mark and he scores. Back even, it's 3-3. Three, three. Through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump off. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. One down, runner at first. And now here's Jeff McNeil. That one ripped, but foul. And a pitch. Right through there for his strike. The two strikes may see some oh, movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Lindor back in there. And the right hander deals. Pitch misses. One and two to count. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. And here it comes. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Lindor stands at first with one out. Runner on the go. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Kicks and fires. High in the air, out to right. Kepler should have this one. He's got it, and there's two away. 
the left fielder, number nine, Brandon Nimmo. Now the left fielder, Brandon Nimmo. One for two. He had an RBI base hit back in the first. That catches the outside corner. It's 0-1. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. you got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing out there nope. most of the time. Off the plate inside. And one and one. Two outs. And a foul ball. Gets a piece and stays alive. Swing and a ground ball out to short. And he can't come up with it. No throw. That's an error. And everyone is safe. Well, two outs. I'm thinking he had his mind on getting in the dugout so they could get to hit. And all it takes is just a little lapse in concentration. So now let's see if his pitcher will pick him up. So two on, but two away. Here's a big power threat. Pete Alonso. One runs in. Nimmo headed for the plate. Save! And they lead by two. Nicely done. Brings home two. Just a solid swing right there. Pounded out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So, runner at second, two down. And next for the Mets, Francisco Alvarez. Fouled off. He was late. Runner at second. Two down. Hey. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. Oh, Minnesota's bullpen with some action. Steven Oker, the left-handed reliever, appears to be getting loose. Peel bar getting loose as well. Righty to the plate. On the ground. And that's just foul. Two outs. And one in scoring position. Man on second, two down. Fouls it back with two strikes. The 0 2 stays alive. Also, really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Well, three score in the inning. Two of them on this two run double. It's now 5 3. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. And welcome back to the ballpark. All set for the start of the inning. Now it's the Twins DH, Carlos Santana. And the right hander back to work. And a foul ball. I'm so glad these ballparks have installed the netting to protect the fans, keep things safer all around the league. Good eye right there. The next pitch misses two and one. That one fouled off.
Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Now that the catch. Ryan, Ryan Jeffers. Jeffers, the next twin up to hit. Jeffers hitting better against right-handers this year, so some reverse splits there. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat oh, no. right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. And the 0-1. Gets him to chase after that one. With the tie run at the plate. And we're in the top half of the sixth. Ball one there. Going to lay off that pitch down. Right-handed reliever. Foul ball still a one and two count. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. At the belt and fires. Swing at a chopper. Hauser toss the second. Now in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. Here's Trevor Larnick. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. And the first one offering one. is not close. And a pitch. Foul ball there. Pretty good pitch to take a pass at in a 1-0 count. Just not able to square it up. Here's a 1-1. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. And a 1-2. Bounce to the left side. Makes a sliding stop. Over to McNeil. Out. On to first. Save. So they get one, but a really nice try there. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. And now for the Twins, Willie Castro. Drove it off the wall last time. Just missed out on a home run. First pitch. Just misses. And there's a curve through for a strike. Back to him with the breaking ball. Just got the corner. It's nothing you can really do with that. Stirring in the bullpen for the Mets. Jorge Lopez. The hard-throwing righty is up and loosening. Braley also throwing. Just nope. missed. Yeah, the 2-1 hammered but foul. And he deals. And that one is inside. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Carlos Correa on deck already. Two homers in the game. Huge impact in this one so far. And you know he'd like to make some noise in this inning as well. Gathers oh. and throws to first. Out number three. So one hit is all they get. Six, seven, eight, two in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Mets five and the Twins three. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Caleb Thielbaum. And one thing on him, he's been really good this season at keeping the ball in the park. Not an easy guy to take deep. 
Ronnie Mauricio now at the plate. The pitch. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. Look, Gordon, I'll tell you firsthand, retired players, we miss a lot of things about playing the game in our playing days, but getting drilled by a pitch like that usually isn't something we talk about. DJ Stewart up now for the Mets. Stewart not having as much success with the bat here at home as you see the splits. First offering and it just misses. Some movement in the Twins bullpen. Steven Oker, the left-hander, up and throwing. And another ball. Mauricio gets his lead at first with nobody out. Left hand hitter waits. Hey. And he chases that one. One away, bottom of the sixth. Chris, as we look back at the pitch sequence, he hadn't seen that curveball at all. How tough is it to adjust to something like that with a bunch of break when you haven't had a look at it yet? Yeah, I mean, you're dialed up for something firm. You never want to take a call third strike as a fastball, so you're going to be a little anxious before you recognize the pitch. And right there, clearly didn't see what was coming. So up next, Brett Beatty. He launched a solo shot back in the second inning of this one. Yeah, that was big for these guys early on. Definitely helped him get off onto the right foot. hit they fired in quickly so it's first and second with only one away now Tyrone Taylor up now for the Mets the bottom of the order here Boogie got to go right after this guy as they look to pick up an add-on run and the number nine guy at the plate Off the mark there, and that's ball one. Ball one, no strike. There's a strike. Here's a one one. Yeah. Swing and a miss as one he ball. was out front that Two time. Strike. And now the count is even. Kicks and deals. That one lifted to left. Larner under it. Makes the grab. Two down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming the open instead of staying Not closed. Sure. If he does right that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Back to the top of the Mets order. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. And a curve drops in for a strike. First and second, two down. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Two on, two outs. That's a ball. In the dirt, blocked. To third, not in time. He's safe. It's second and third with two gone.
two outs. This one in the dirt and well done to keep it close. Swung on and there it goes. It is hard. It's 8-3. He really needed that swing. He hasn't been getting a ton of results at the plate lately, so I'm sure that one felt especially good. A breaking ball on the inside part of the plate requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly over with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. Base is empty with two away. And now Jeff McNeil. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Two down, nobody on. Ball. This has been a rough inning, but sometimes you just got to work through it, save the rest of that bullpen, somehow stop the bleeding. The 1-1. One -one. He swings and fouls one off. Already three runs across in the frame here in game one of this three-game set. Next one misses, and the count's even at two. Got him looking for the K. Another look at the long ball from Francisco Lindor. It's now 8-3. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. What now? Jump out. About to get on your bubble. Shorty sure does with me, go shoot like a jumper. Rounds get the rain and go boom like a stunzer. One got your name on it. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Phil Bickford. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times now, this season, as you see with the big ERA. Number so this is an important outing yeah. for him to get on the right track. <laughs> Here's Carlos Correa. He's got a couple homers already, so can he possibly do it again? Come on, man. Of course he can. Those two he hit were legit, and he looks pretty locked in right now at the dip. pitch that's Aye. in there and it's 0 1 some hitters are just more confident if they can track that first pitch out of the hand of the pitcher they don't care if they fall behind 0 1 the 0 1 right Aye. through there for a strike Still late on it. You Boy, rarely yeah. see that. It almost makes yeah. you think that he was trying to set the pitcher up. I mean, if you can't catch up to the off-speed stuff, there's no way you're going to touch a fastball. Lewis oh, stands in now, looks at that one inside. Looking to get something going. This is the guy you want at the plate. He's been great for this team. He is a professional hitter. One down, base is empty. That hey. one finds the corner. One ball, one strike. Now this one's crushed down the line. Looking foul ball. Bases empty one away here in the top half of inning number seven. Fouls it off, still one and two.
Righty delivers. Started to go after it. Now a look down to first. No swing. He held up. Patrick Johnson with the call there. Next pitch downstairs. Three balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. He swings and hits a fly ball, center field. Taylor makes the play, and that'll do it. We're back at a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Anthony DiSclafani. I think it's got to be a little tough coming in out of the pin when your guys are trailing so big on the scoreboard. Just doesn't have the same intensity to it, but he's got to find a way because these batters count the same for his stats, obviously, regardless of the score. Three, four, five, due up for the home team. Brandon Nimmo up now for the Mets. Swing and a bouncer. Castro sends it to first. One up, one down. Well, I'm impressed with this guy's internal block. He knew he had plenty of time to take that extra step, secure his grip on the baseball, and make a strong, accurate throw. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. That one finds the zone. Strike one. pitch Three. struck him out looking well he's gonna have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one that was his third strikeout and this one looking obviously so he's been a little overmatched he's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate and now the catcher comes up to him Francisco Alvarez and a foul ball There's a breaking ball that drops in there. Two down, nobody on. Here at the bottom of the seventh. Got him looking. And the Mets go one, two, three. Nothing doing for the Mets. But they lead it eight, three. Welcome back. And a new arm on the mound to start the eight. Austin Adams. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're called upon with big leads because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. And here's the first baseman, Kyle Farmer. The wind of the pitch. Adams in his sixth season he features a slider a four seamer and he works in a two seamer this one high in the air to left center Nimmo has it sized up pulls it in for the out up next to the twin the right field now batting Max Matt. Kepler Kepler Pitch is in there. That's strike one. Adams is what you're looking for in a good reliever. The ball stays in the ballpark. It's so hard to square him up. The Mets leading by five, and we're in the top of the eighth. 
The punch out there. Two gone now. Well, this is no secret. That slider is going to be his go-to pitch. Now Everyone now. in the ballpark knows it. It's a massive part of his arsenal, and he'll throw it a lot and in pretty much any count, any situation, and he's going to look to punch guys out as well. I tell you what, the effectiveness of that slider is always a big key for him. Santana stands in now and watches strike one. Action in the Mets bullpen. Jorge Lopez, the right-handed sinker baller. He looks to be readying himself. Fujinami getting cranked up as well. And the pitch. Ground ball, Alonso. He takes it himself oh. to the bag, and that'll do it. Twins are set down one, two, three. Can't chip away at an eight, three deficit. And we're back, bottom of the eighth. And here is Ronnie Mauricio. Di Sclafani back to work. That pitch gets the inside corner. That's strike one. Inside almost got him. The wind of the pitch. Line to left. Base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. He was all over that one. Now pitch was away, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do with it. Drive it the other way. Just go with the pitch. So up next for New York, DJ Stewart. Run around the move. Fought off foul. And that is in for a strike. 0 and 2. Ouch, that one drilled him. On the run, sends it over to first. Oh, not in time. It's an unlikely infield single. And now the hustle out to check on him. That was quite a shot he took as you see him down on the knee. Yeah, clearly in some real pain, but he will not want to come out of this game if he doesn't have to. It's looking to me like he's going to try to shake it off and continue. Now the third baseman, Brett Beatty. That's in there, and that's strike one. That's to third. And it gets by him. Rounds third, headed for the plate. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. the center fielder Tyrone Taylor one for three and nope. the slider oh, just misses well he's just given up three straight hits and now behind in this count to this hitter might be a good time for somebody to call a timeout maybe the pitching coach go out there and talk to him just a little bit just missed when you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up and that's what he's been doing it's made a big impact for him in recent games here comes a pitch. That misses the zone. And now 3-0. and There's a sinker at the knees for a strike. There's a swing and a drop.
Well, he's really slowed the game down, and it's like he's moving in full speed, and everybody is a step or two behind. The way that he squared up that baseball tells me that he is seeing it like a beach ball. Steven Oker will take over here. Well, they need someone to stop the bleeding and keep the score right where it is. Seems like a tough task today with the way this lineup is swinging it. And the batter will be the shortstop, Francisco Lindor. There's the strike. Man at second. Foul ball. And the 2 That's out. Activity in the bullpen. Brock Stewart up and throwing. Jax also getting ready. Runner in scoring position. Nobody out. Here the bottom half of the eighth inning. Next That's offering cool. is downstairs. Great job of laying off those pitches down in the zone to even the count up at two and two. Such a better feeling for the hitter. Fights it off. He'll see another. And now the lefty. And another ball. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Fastball to letters, throws him for strike three. Well, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. McNeil stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. Popped up. Lewis gets under it. Makes the grab for the second out. Inside, just missed. That one not close. Now 2-0. Right through there for a strike. Man on second, two down. Swing and a foul straight back. He was a little out front, but did a good job keeping the hands back long enough to foul that pitch off. Ah. Swings and misses. They limit the damage here. Three runs on four hits, no errors, and one left off. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Mets 11 and the Twins 3. Welcome back, and here comes the closer, Edwin Diaz. And he's coming in to pitch on four days rest right here. And that might not be a factor at all in terms of being rusty, but he should definitely be well rested. And here's the catcher, Brian Jeffers. The pitch. Hey. Down the middle for a strike. Going to one. Diaz, multi time all star. He features a four seam fastball, a slider, and he works in a two seamer. This ball's chopped on the ground. Tosses to oh. first. Now one gone in the ninth. Now back. Let me be. Trevor. Larnick. Trevor Larnick, the next twin up to hit. And 
immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Movement in the bullpen. Brooks Raley preparing to come on if needed. Swing and a broken bat roller towards third. Beatty to first. And they're down to their last out. Good slider inside right there. Batter fighting to get there. Just rolled over. Got the ground ball. <laughs> Willie Castro digs in now. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. Power relievers one after another coming out of the bullpen these days. Got to be ready for that first pitch heater. Two down, nobody on. Here at the top of the ninth. Misses oh, outside. Goes. Ball one. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The Twins down to their final strike. That's ball and that's downstairs and outside. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Two outs. Battling here as he fouls it away. Hit to right, and that should do it. He puts it away, and that'll do it. The Mets take this one in a blowout. What a big win by eight runs, and when you have that kind of lead, you make it easier for the pitching staff to come out, make their pitches, pitch to contact, and not worry about giving up the lead. So nice job today all the way around to get the W. And your final, 11-3. to three. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, Thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chambi. Talk to you soon.